Welcome to the Exceptional Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Anita Brooks. And here you'll find teaching topics, interviews, conversations, and coaching tips, all designed to help you level up. We all lead someone. The question is, are we leading well, exceptionally well? So join me on a quest, not for perfection, but absolutely for exceptional leadership. Welcome back to another episode of the Exceptional Leadership Podcast. Today, I want to talk about financial smart goals. We're going to finish out our theme this month, talking about some ways that you can be fiscally smart about your business so that you can increase income, net profits, and remain sustainable for the long haul. No matter what economic conditions that we're in, it's very important that leaders help influence, help maintain, help the business continue to grow by being wise with how money is spent and how money is generated. And so financial smart goals are one of the ways that we make sure that we are influencing exceptionally well in the organizations that we lead. So first off, let's talk about what a smart goal is. So a smart goal is specific, it's measurable, it's action oriented, it's realistic, and it's time stamped. So I want to go through each of those individually just a little bit more. For a financial goal, to be specific, there needs to be a dollar amount or a percentage that's attributed to that, but something that says this is the target. This is what we're shooting for. And we know that when we reach that number, then we've hit our target. Measurable. You need to be able to measure some way the accuracy of the progress that you're making financially with whatever that specific uh, amount is that you've set. There needs to be action behind it. So an action oriented goal is something to where we say, if we take these steps, we're going to get there. We're going to achieve that. So another way of looking at a smart goal, maybe instead of looking at a bullseye on a, on a target, maybe you think of it as a fish, a finish line that you run toward. But there's got to be steps that we take that move us forward to achieve that goal. And it needs to be realistic. Now, I believe in goals that stretch. I mean, if it's just the easy button, it's really not much of a goal. So yes, we want to have to reach for what we want, but it does need to be realistic. It needs to be feasible. It needs to be something that we can accomplish, even though we probably will have to exert extra energy and effort to do so. And there needs to be a timestamp. Every SMART goal needs to have a specific date and sometimes an actual time of day, but it it depends on what the goal is. But like, for instance, many of my clients, well, pretty much all of my clients, I take them through a regular exercise of setting their top 10 priority goals for the year. And I always say it, it doesn't just end there. So by 1231, and, and we'll say this year uh, at the time of this recording, 1231 of 2023, we're going to accomplish this specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, but it still stretches us, goal. And so by doing that, there's a couple of things that happen. One, so the human brain, I, I, I've figured out, and it's something I've really thought about fairly deeply. So there are four things that we can connect to. So if someone makes an abstract statement, it's like the human brain can't latch on to it. But there's four areas that it does embrace. And so one is rhymes. So there's a reason Dr. Seuss, his books have sold so many millions of copies through the years because he uses rhyme so effectively. And the human brain can remember and retain more information when there's a rhyme involved. Rhythms. So rhythms can be a song. It can be an alliteration where we use the the same first letter to, to start words in a series there. 
Um, so anything that's got that kind of a, a rhythm, like even a, a poetic kind of a rhythm, those type of things the brain latches onto and holds. Another thing are stories. The, the brain is very engaged quickly when there's a story. We can be bored as all get out, but if somebody starts to tell a story, we perk up. We can be reading a book and it's kind of like boring expository statistics, studies, whatever. But then a story begins and suddenly we engage at a higher level. But then the last one are figures, numbers. The human mind connects to numbers. So when we're creating smart goals and there are very specific numbers and there are numbers in a particular date, what that does is it tells our sub- subconscious that we're serious and, and you can hold on to this number. This is what we're working toward. And it will actually help push and propel you forward to achievement. The other nice thing about a SMART goal with a date stamp on it is there is a level of accountability that comes into place. And a lot of times in my P4 power coaching practice, I mean, I, I do, I'm, I'm not boasting that I'm going on what a lot of other people have said to me and about me in, in this work, but a lot of what I bring to the table is accountability. Like I do prod my clients to execute and complete things that they would not have done otherwise. And having a specific date stamp and pushing them toward that finish line or that bullseye on the target is one of the ways that I can hold them accountable and make sure that they finish the things that they truly want to start and that are going to benefit the organization. So as I was thinking about this, I was considering, so what are some specific SMART goals that would help a business make more money? You know, coming up with more creative ideas to help increase profits, Uh, What are some things that could be brainstormed? I'm a big proponent and I facilitate a lot of brainstorming sessions that can help generate new product or service ideas or potential revenue services or sources or ways to reduce costs. I love taking my clients through those kinds of exercises because every single time there's new revelations and there's exciting things that we identify that could and should be tackled. And then I make sure that they do. In in brainstorming, we often are able to identify new marketing strategies and ways for improvement and including ways to increase customer or client loyalty and to improve our customer care. So, you know, just bringing people together to put their minds together in a facilitated way. And I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you do have good facilitation. I mean, I went to the trouble to get my certification as a facilitator because I recognized that it's not the same if you don't have someone guiding and keeping everyone on track. And I'm not a person that likes to meet just to meet. I can't stand to waste time. If we're going to do something, I want it to be productive. But when you have a facilitated brainstorming session, I can tell you I have seen singular sessions like that where, I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars have I've been identified in ways to be saved or made. And when the implementation happens, yeah, sometimes it's a little rough getting there. But boy, when you do, the reward is sweet. And what's really cool about it, when you have employees involved, and I'm not saying you bring every employee in for every brainstorming session, but you bring in key people who either affect or would possibly be affected by some of the things that will be discussed, and you have a a representative from every area, then it enriches what's brought to the table, which in turn enriches the bottom line of the company. So SMART goals start there with that brainstorming session, and then you can refine it. Then you can get specific, and you can get measurable, and you can make sure that there's action behind it, and you can put the date stamps on it, but and you can determine whether it's feasible or not. But when you do that, I'm telling you, get ready to learn some really interesting things about your own business and some things that may surprise you, may delight you, but all of them will help you reach a greater good for the organization and for the people who work for it and for yourself too. But 
as I was considering what some smart goals might be for for clients and this is based on patterns I see so I often look for patterns and one of the benefits I have is I work across different industries now I, I in the beginning I didn't so much but these days I work in a lot of different industries, but I'm always um, fascinated by how many patterns just cross. It doesn't matter what kind of industry it is. If you've heard me before, you've probably heard me talk about the seven core invisible drains that I've, I've identified. And so those invisible drains, it doesn't matter what industry, what business, what organization that I step into, I can guarantee that every single time I do, I'm going to find issues in each of these seven areas, and every one of these seven areas will directly impact the net profitability, the bottom line, the sustainability for that that business or organization. So anyway, the SMART goals that I think are are interesting that you could potentially uh, put into place for your business, and I'm going to leave these a little more open-ended than I would do if I were in a true coaching session with you for your business, because with you, I would be more specific. But because there's a broad range of listeners here, um, I think it's important for me to just let your imagination uh, kind of come into play for this for you. But one is to set a SMART goal to increase sales, say, by 10% by the end of the quarter. So let's say that, um, you know, you've evaluated, you're going to want to look at your financial reports, you're going to want to see what your sales have been, say, over the last um, quarter, the last year, the last two, three years, you want to look at some of those measurements. And then you want to say, We're going to increase sales by 10%, say by March 31st, 2023. So that would be the end of a quarter. But then it's very specific. And as you look at that, believe me, 10%, I cannot imagine any business that if everyone like pulled together and they did get creative in how they went about it, they could find a way to increase sales by 10%. It's not that much. And oftentimes when you really get intentional, you know, I talk about intentionality a lot, but when you get intentional about looking for ways to produce a very specific outcome by a very specific date, it's so interesting what you come up with that maybe you've been leaving on the table and you just didn't realize it. So I think increasing sales by a percent is a very good SMART goal. Reducing costs by 5% by the end of the year. So you could say we are going to reduce our costs and in this particular area by 1231 of 2023. And, you know, as you look at the GLs and the different, you know, line items, you can decide where you want to reduce some specific costs. Now, just think about it this way. What if you identify five different line items and in each one of them, you set a SMART goal to reduce by 5%. By the end of that year, when you achieve those goals, because everyone is tracking in the same direction, everyone is unified in their efforts, everyone knows what the target looks like, what you've done is you've now saved your company 25%. That's pretty amazing. And I'm telling you, depending on what your gross income is, that can be a pretty healthy number. But even if you're a really small business, 25% is 25%. So set those goals. Look at where you can really become intentional and shoot for that target and then keep pushing yourself forward until you get there and push those that you lead. Another thing is you could develop a new product or service within six months. You know, at this, you know, type of a stage, you may not determine right now what the new product or service is going to be, but you say that we're going to develop a new product or service by June 30th, 2023, And maybe you determine what department that's going to be in, but you get as specific as possible without restraining too much either. There's a little bit of a a artsy feel to this too. You don't want to make it so rigid feeling 
that it squelches the creativity in people, especially when it comes to developing something new. When you are creating something that hasn't existed before, you do want to leave room for the mind. And and by the way, this is one of the things that I love about a good facilitated brainstorming session. When I start with a brainstorming, what I tell people is, now at this first level, like there is no idea that's dumb or stupid. There's no idea that's not feasible. There's no idea that you should be embarrassed about. There's no idea that you should talk yourself out of. If you think of something, let's throw it on the board. Because here's what I found in years of going through this kind of exercise with my clients. When we go through a brainstorming session, sometimes does someone say something a little silly or that makes other people laugh? Yeah. I've seen times where initially people are laughing, but after a few minutes of discussion, they decide, you know what, that's actually not that crazy. We really could do that. And then I've seen them implement on it and actually make a lot more money. That's always cool. Something else that happens more frequently, though, is people, it's like, say someone says something a little bit silly and, you know, there's laughter and a you know, little, you know, elbow jabbing, that kind of thing. But a lot of times it sparks another idea in someone else that they wouldn't have thought of if that moment hadn't occurred. So you never want to squelch that creativity in that brainstorming phase. Now, I have other follow-up exercises that we go through, and it, it goes through more quickly than what you might think. But what I do is we go through, we exhaust the brainstorming phase where we we get every idea that's come to us that we can think of. We get it up on the board. I love flip charts. I am the flip chart queen because I have seen the power of, of visibility. So we're talking about it, but I stand up at a flip chart and I record everything up on those charts. And it's amazing how much that furthers um, the depth that people are able to pull from the well that, that comes from within themselves that they didn't even know they had there when it comes to ideas. The other cool thing about using flip charts and people can just take a picture of it um, with their phone afterwards, and they often do, because then they want to go back and reflect on it or, or maybe do some additional follow-up work. But after the brainstorming phase, then we start looking at feasibility, um, maybe what isn't feasible, maybe ideas that maybe we could tweak a little bit and make them feasible. And then after that, I quickly am able to take them through an exercise that helps them prioritize in a way that doesn't create any tension or conflict with people, but it's a great consensus way to identify what the high priority action items are. And then as a business coach, what I do is my job, part of my job is to urge them and see that they execute on those ideas. And so there's some really cool things that come from that. Okay, again, I digress. But another really great SMART goal that I think a lot of um, businesses could benefit from and leaders could inspire and spur in people is increasing customer loyalty by, say, 20% at the end of the year. That's a great goal. Um, and again, that is measurable because you can see that uh, coming from the, the profits, the gross profits that come into the business. But Getting really intentional about creating greater customer loyalty, which, by the way, will come through customer care. Actually, I'll do a podcast on that um, in the near future because customer care is another one of my passion points that I love to coach and train on. But when you really make sure that your customers are feel cared for and you increase that customer loyalty, not only do they tend to spend more with you, but they tend to refer you more often to others. And so that becomes measurable then through your gross income. Another thing is increasing website traffic, let's say by 25% in three months. For most businesses, again, it's very doable because especially you want to know what most businesses do with their website. They like let it sit there and they expect people to show up like they would through a drive through takeout window. Well, that's not what happens. You have to drive traffic to your website. 
I mean, the Lord only knows how many millions of domain names exist now. So your website, you, you've got to find a way to take it away from all the noise that's out there and get people, and by the way, the right people, the right consumers to your website. Um, whether it's another business, if you're a B2B, or whether it's the general public, whatever kind of industry you're in, there are ways that you can drive the right website traffic to you. And one of the things I teach in marketing is making sure that you are marketing to your preferred ideal avatar. In other words, you are not marketing just to everyone. Your avatar is a persona that represents your ideal customer. Okay. Your, a- I'm sorry, your average customer. And you want your avatar, that persona of your average customer to be someone that you prefer to do business with, you prefer that they would be recommending you to their family and friends. So increasing website traffic by 25% within three months um, and putting a date stamp on what the the end of that third month is going to be, that's going to be a way you can get really intentional about that. Here's another one. Reduce employee turnover by 10% within six months. Let me tell you, folks, employee turnover is expensive and it's more expensive than it's ever been. Losing good employees, it's really hard to replace them. The employee pool has shrunk. It's continuing to shrink at astounding figures. In the United States of America, baby boomers are retiring and leaving the workforce at a rate of over 11,000 people per month. We do not have that many new people to come into those positions. Not to mention the fact the cost of training, the expense of that is incredible. And that expense lingers usually for at least a couple of years. Because no matter what the job is, if someone, especially if they've been in a job, let's say five years, 10 years or longer, There are things that they have picked up and they've learned to do very efficiently, much more accurately. And your newer person, no fault of their own, it takes time for them to learn all the little tricks and tips that help them become more efficient and more profitable in what they do. So reducing employee turnover is going to lend to a much healthier bottom line. Another a figure that I think would be a good financial smart goal for a business, increase profits by 15% by the end of the year. Making sure that you're not just looking at your gross income. It's, again, one of those interesting things to me. How many organizations only look at their gross uh, income? And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. What about your profitability? What about the net profitability of your company? You need to be looking at that. You need to be measuring that. And there does need to be a SMART goal that you set a percentage that you want to shoot for to achieve by the end of the year. Another one, improve customer satisfaction ratings by 20% within a year. In most businesses, you can evaluate that by reviews that you get. A lot of businesses are reviewed. And so depending on what type you are, there may be more than others, but you can still do that by percentage and look at that and see if you can improve what people say about you online and whether or not they were satisfied if you did meet their expectations, um, if it was better than what they expected. Look for that. And I will tell you too, if you have customers who come into your business and they tell you that they had a really good experience with you, ask them. Don't be afraid to ask or encourage them to give you an online review. Those things are powerful. And I know a lot of industries that their consumers determine whether or not they're going to frequent that business, whether or not they're going to open their wallets to give them money based on what other people say about them. So just make sure anything you can to improve customer satisfaction you're doing. And if nothing else, people talk. Another thing, because so many businesses today are reliant on their social media exposure, their uh, social media presence, 
um, again, it kind of goes to that persona that you have, that um, customer perception of who you are as a business. And so, you know, trying to increase your social media followers, let's say by 15% in the next 90 days, that can be a really good goal and making sure that your marketing efforts, you're targeting, again, that preferred ideal avatar. So you're not just looking for social media numbers by percentage. Yes, you do want to have a measurable smart goal, but you want to make sure that you are targeting that preferred avatar for you, for your industry, for your business. And another, launch a new marketing campaign in the next, you know, two months, say. Sometimes we just kind of get caught in the rote and it becomes stale. Do something different. Shake things up a little bit. Now, you want to assess whether or not it makes sense, whether there's wisdom in what you're planning on doing, whether it's cost feasible. But you know what? A lot of times there are ways to market that don't have to be uber expensive and actually can be highly effective. So if it's been a while since, you know, you or your team have really done something different with your marketing, don't think that, oh, by making X number of social media posts uh, a day that we've, you know, done our marketing due diligence. No, do something different. You want to know one thing that I encourage a lot of my business coaching clients to do? Hand write a card to some of your your best customers and send it to them. Uh, Even better, Send a handwritten card and mail it to someone you'd like to do business, but you're not doing business with and just thank them for what they do and be specific in that. Say something that you appreciate particularly about what they do, maybe something that they do for their community or something that they do that, you know, makes the world a better place, whatever it is, find something, but that's a fresh way It's an old thing, but it's now a fresh way to market and to be very intentional with your marketing efforts. But whatever it is, set that SMART goal to do better marketing. And make it a SMART goal to acquire new customers or clients. Set a number. We're going to acquire X number of new customers or clients within the next 30 days. And really be intentional to do that consistently. And again, over time, you can see big results that come from tiny steps. You know, I love the uh, philosophy that says if you make 1% improvement every day and you, you continue to do that consistently, look how much you will have improved in a year's time. Well, the same thing is true of business. Sometimes a lot of tiny steps taken one after the other lead to great outcomes. But sometimes we think if it's not big enough, it's not good enough. And that isn't true. And sometimes by having that kind of a mindset, we can talk ourselves out of setting SMART goals and then following through on SMART goals so that we achieve financial SMART goals for the businesses and the organizations where we are a leader. So I hope this helps you. No matter what size or style or shape the business or organization that you're leading comes in, whether you're a solopreneur, uh, whether you own a small mom and pop shop, whether you're a middle manager in a, a business that employs 100 people, whether you're the CEO uh, where there's thousands of people who are reliant on your leadership, or maybe you're at a board level, whatever it is, set smart financial goals for the areas that you're responsible for. Be a part of the solutions that are going to help your organization drive income up, Create greater net profits and help you remain sustainable for the long haul. You know, the the current economic climate, it's not always comfortable. Things are tough in some areas. 
frankly, some things are probably going to get tougher. And there are some things that, you know, are probably going pretty well, depending on what industry you're in. But if you're not looking at the data, if you're not looking at the hard numbers, and if you're not making data-driven decisions, which, by the way, a lot of times come from setting financial smart goals, then you don't really have an accurate picture, not only of where you are, but about what you need to do to lead you to where you want to go. And for any of us, when we're in a leadership position, there are other people who are counting on us. Even if you're a solopreneur, I'll bet that there are people who are counting on you to be diligent, to work with integrity, and to make good, wise fiscal decisions. So, as I always remind you, really think about taking action, not just listening to this and moving on, but actually act on it. And as you do so, as I tell you every week now, stay intentional and be exceptional. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Exceptional Leadership Podcast. There's magic in meeting with an objective, and I always have an objective for you, not only in these episodes, but also from the other resources I offer on my website, anitabrooks.com. That's A-N-I-T-A-B-R-O-O-K-S.com. There you'll find information on digital courses, webinars, books, workbooks, Of course, my in-person P4 Power Coaching for businesses and organizations. And if you need a speaker for your conference or your strategic retreat, I'm your gal. But I'm also excited to let you know about a new service that we're offering. For less than half the price of a daily Starbucks latte for a month, you can join our P4 Power Coaching community. This is a monthly membership where you'll get insider tips. And you'll also be able to join our monthly Zoom meetings that are one part strategy sessions, one part mastermind, one part networking, one part coaching. I can promise you, you'll not only learn from me, but you'll learn from others in the group. We'll also have monthly webinars as part of the P4 Power Coaching community, and we'll have coaching resources and exercises. And you'll get first opportunities and special offers for many of the other things that we have to offer. And of course, you will get leadership encouragements. The P4 Power Coaching community is all about growth, success, and celebrating our wins. And remember, it's never too late for a fresh start with fresh faith. So embrace your exceptional leadership impact with fresh resolve to make the difference you were made for.